right, guys. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Scrotitis Plays Feed the Beast. How you guys doing today? We are back in our shop and we are busy working. What are we working on? Well, boys and girls, we have a need and that need is not for speed. <laughs> it is for... Oh, that's not right. Um... Shoot, what is that recipe now? It is for lava. Uh, we made a bit of a miscalculation. Copper. Whenever we were uh, deciding what materials to use and not use. And we're probably going to need three of those. Um, for our... Oh, that's not the right... There we go. We'll get it. Oh, I did not want to do that. My copper sources are so low right now. Oh, oh well. Anyway, um, as I was saying, we are uh, getting dangerously low on uh, copper, and that's not what I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah. Miscalculation on what was required for our milk making machine out here. Let me show you the adjustments we made. Uh, first of all, a little half door because this is eventually going to be all enclosed, but right now I just need something to keep out the baddies. Uh, oh, what is it? Is this deja vu? What? That's right, guys. I completed the build on this side. We just need to put in our waterways and get some cows up there, and we'll be ready to go with double production. So that's the first change of note. The second is what I've done here. Okay, let me walk you through the process. Um, I still have um, one side going directly into our uh, liquid transposer. And then from there, I have the output, the empty buckets, going down this tube into the chest. That does two things. First, it allows us access into the chest, and also it allows the filter to work more smoothly. Uh, so that's together. And then we have here our liquids, the yellow output coming out of the top of our configuration, heading over to our milk tower, which, as you can see, we've got quite a bit. Come on. Any second now, guys. There we go. 334,000 units of milk. Uh, still lots of room, not even a quarter fill yet. So we got lots of room to go there. Uh, but then we split this off into our first biogas engine. And you can see that that's full of milk. Problem being that this side needs lava in it. Okay, that's easy enough. I can go down and get lava. But the problem being, once I get that lava, it runs out. Um, if you use biomass in these, once it heats up, it sustains heat and stays there. The milk, unfortunately, doesn't allow it to sustain an, a constant temperature. So that leads us to what we need to do today. That being, we need to come up with a consistent source of lava to be used in this process. Now, how are we going to do that? I have gone ahead and... No, 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 no. Get out of here. I was not paying attention. Back up. Back up. <laughs> I have gone ahead and already created a very helpful tool, which I believe is inside now. It is a magma crucible, okay? And what this allows one to do is, there we go, is create lava from objects. What sort of objects, you may ask? Well, if we have netherrack, we can use netherrack, which we have some, not a lot, we have some. You can also use cobble. Now, it's not as friendly, user-friendly in terms of how quickly it's able to achieve. Um, oh, no. how, able, how quickly it's able to convert the cobble into um, lava, but it is still functional. 
So what I'm thinking is we have our lava plant right here next to, um, you know, I'd like to have it there, actually. Because these cows are eventually going to be placed over there, and then the rest will be gone, and this pit will be history as well. Maybe we will consolidate these guys. See if we can push them down a little bit. So you know what? How about I take care of that? And uh, I'll get back to you guys whenever, once we're ready to do some building, okay? All right, guys, this looks like a pretty good place to go ahead and start building. So let's see what we need here. We are going to need um, tanks to house our lava. I'm going to go ahead and just put one big one right there for the time being, okay? So we've got that. We're going to need our magma crucible. Okay, and that's going to go right... I'm just going to put that right next to it for the time being. And you know what? Let's... Let's actually lift it up. Okay. Let's put it right like that. We're going to need a pump going in. All right. And this is where I want to do things. I want to see if this will work. I don't know if it will or not. Um, I want to tap right into our milk supply. Uh, hmm. Should work. Uh, come on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm the worst at flying. There we go. So we put one here. Come on. Okay. We'll connect that in a second. Alright, so that's connected there. I don't know if that'll work or not. <laughs> and what do we need here? That's where the nether rack will go. We just need to get power into it. So that's going to give our power. We need our output to be orange, which it's already set up that way. I don't know if that'll work either. So this is just a big old question mark all the way around, guys. Let's still... You know what? I wonder if it needs to go into a side. I wonder if we could just do that. Well, that's not going to work because then we would need... Well, yeah. I'm going to have to go and borrow some lava to test this out. I should have had that already, guys. I apologize. Uh, but it shouldn't take me too long to go ahead and collect a couple buckets. So I am going to go grab that right quick, and I will get back to you guys, and we will test out our little mini lava pump station, and then we'll look to see how we can improve upon it, okay? I just need to see the mechanics first, okay? I'm going to go grab some lava and be back. All right, guys, we're back, and with a, a quick uh, flaw, I come back with six buckets of lava. <laughs> so this is how the biogas engine works. You put your lava in here and it puts it in the appropriate spot. And then it's, this says it's heated up, it's ready to go, which makes it start pumping. And as we can see, there goes the milk. And voila, milk's filling up. So let's go ahead and put in our lava on this guy. And shoot, you know what? We need some sort of lever or something to give power there. I just did my organization and emptied everything out of my inventory, so I apologize for all this running back and forth, guys. Uh, let's make a quick lever here. There we go. Got that. And you know what? I better turn that puppy off. I just don't trust that thing running full tilt whenever I'm not around to watch it. Okay, so we got this lever. Um, lever? There we go. Click. 
There we go. All right. So, are you producing enough MJs? You're not producing any MJs. You're storing, but you're not producing any. Maybe we need more milk. Let's see if we can grab some milk here. All right, guys, so we got our milk in there. We got our lava. We got full heat. And uh, we're not really getting any action here. I don't know if it's too slow. Let's try to see um, if we can sort of speed things up here for a second. This is all test. I got to figure out how this is going to work. But for the time being, so we can get some results going. Let's throw on our Sterling, our Sterling engines. Where are they? Should be right around here somewhere. We just had them. There they are. Oh, so they were right in front of me is what you're saying. So I'm going to throw these on and see if this actually helps our production at all, guys. All right. All right, guys, we're back, and as you can see, we've got a lot of different stuff going on here, uh, but it still isn't working out as planned, and I believe that is due to the fact that we need a more consistent lava source. So what we're going to do right now is we are going to hook up our... Um, we're going to hook up our magma crucible and we're going to have a cycle running to allow it to run alongside with these magmatic engines okay now these run off of lava and basically what i'm hoping to accomplish with this is that these this these will provide enough power for this and then this will provide the lava necessary for these so if you can follow that logic, <laughs> I know it's a bit backwards, guys. Just uh, stick with me here, all right? So we're going to do uh, two more of those like that, I think. And we're going to pop that right on top, okay? Now, our output is orange, and we want that on the bottom. So that's connected. And let's get this. Oh, uh, you know what? We need wooden... Shoot. I eventually am going to replace... I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not. I want to replace the uh, wooden and golden... Uh, tr uh, what are these called? Conductive piping. I want to replace those with the uh, energy conduits. But I don't have the resources right now to be able to do that. So for the time being, we're just going to have to suffer with these uh, these pipes until we have enough resources for the other but let's get this set up and uh, give it a, give her a test I think this should uh, this should get things going well so we got our, our magma crucible here it's gonna have our nether rack in it and then we're gonna have our power coming in the side Maybe we should have the power going in the top. Let's um let's put these down first. We're gonna have one, two, three, and then uh, let me think here. Uh, yeah, that's right. One, two, three there. For our wooden conductives. Wooden, wooden, wooden. Uh, no. Let me see here. You know what, guys? Let me go ahead and jump off and lay this out. You get the idea of what we're going for, though, right? We're going to have um, 
our biogas engines running off of the lava and the milk. We need a constant lava supply because milk will burn through lava, unlike biomass. So we have our magma crucible that's going to be generating. Um, it's going to generate lava from another rack for the time being. We may set up a process to allow it to run off of. Uh, cobblestone but the uh, netherrack is more uh, productive so we want to have netherrack as long as possible and maybe even set up a barrel next to it I kind of like that idea so let me set up this situation here how we want things to play out and then we'll get back to actually uh, testing it out and uh, walking you guys through what I've done okay Sounds like a plan. All right, guys. So we're back, and we've done a good bit of work. Uh, but I finally got a working combination here, guys, and I'm pretty pleased with it. This is what we've got, our finished product. And actually, if you take a peek up here, it's run successfully enough that everything is full of milk. Even our piping here is full of milk. So that's, uh, that's a good sign. Okay, let me run you through what we did to make this a successful uh, operation. Okay, first thing we replaced all of those. Um, oops. We replaced all of the annoying um, build craft pipes, the conductive piping, with this redstone conduit piping. Uh, we've got it here running into the side of our liquid transposer, and we've got it over here running through one of the most important uh, functions of this, which is our magma crucible and our magma magmatic engines. Okay, now these can, can be kind of costly because these magmatic engines are actually made out of uh, invar ingots, which is a combination of iron and something. I don't know. Look it up, guys. <laughs> Here, wait. Let me look it up real quick. Um, but, uh... I forget. Invar ingots. And it's a combination of... I always have the darndest time finding it in this thing. Uh, this is everything that it's made in. I'm not sure, um, but you can find it. I made it in the uh, induction smelter over there. So anyway, we've got magmatic engines that all feed into this magma crucible. I've got a chest over here full of netherrack. And these engines run off of the lava that is produced by this. Here, let me just show you real quick what happens. We'll just take, I don't know, five. We don't want too much to overflow it, but we do want enough to demonstrate what this actually does. So, netherrack is the most efficient uh, energy to lava producing ratio. You can use cobble and I think smooth stone and maybe a couple other things, but uh, netherrack, like I said, is the most efficient energy uh, saver. So what this is gonna do is, as this fills up, it makes lava and it's going to pump it through the liquid duct into all these engines and as you see as soon as these get lava into them which it has just a little bit they start firing off and producing energy at a maximum of 4 mj per tick uh, but then also that lava then flows this way into our biogas engines and start to fill up this tank okay see again over here and fill up those engines as well as these and I have an extra storage tank on the side for lava that fills up uh, now this the purpose of this lava is actually so that I can kick start these engines with something a little bit better you put a bucket in and it fills it up to there which is a pretty good start as opposed to these little bits going in and filling it up 46 MB uh, a bucket is a thousand. So that gives it a pretty good head start. And you'll watch this engine will keep going while the other ones don't. The only uh, thing I don't like about the way I have this set up is that these 
back engines, these side two engines have two inputs, so they sort of fire longer. But uh, and as you see, that's all the all that uh, all the netherrack that we have left. But then these now have a substantial bit of lava in there, and we can turn these on and start producing energy. So what I want to do then essentially is make a grid of these milk pipes and of this lava pipes coming off of here and do uh, four by four on either side of these engines and then have a master red uh, redstone conduit wire right running along here I think that will um, that will then provide power for the rest of the house I think it'd be pretty good um, Another thing that we may do is connect this tank up with a geothermal generator if we need EU for certain things. That's something. This design is actually not... I can't take credit for the magmatic engines and the magma crucible design. This is a design that's on the wikis everywhere for the most efficient use of, of uh, lava and, and how to power one of these things because they're actually extremely... Uh, they suck a lot of power. 300 MJ per tick is what they require. So... Um, not the most efficient use of power, but uh, if you have this setup, which is kind of expensive with the Unbar ingots, it works out well. Uh, but uh, like I said, moving forward, this is going to be our power plant, guys. I'm just going to continue to add these biogas engines, which, as you can see, our milk container is, or our milk tank is completely full. So we've got milk forever. We can, we can fill up as many of these engines as pos as we need to. And what I may do, instead of actually linking off of this one, because these are going to be our main... Um, it's just coming off of here. It's supposed to be milk that way. I may run a second one off of the side here. That's what all these valves are. We can connect off all these different places. And maybe run one out of the tank then to fill in the rest of the biogas. And keep the two lines separate. I don't know. It's a thought. Um... But anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and call this an episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this is our cow, po cow power plant is officially underway, and things are working out well. Like I said, I need to do some mining so we can get some more biogas engines, but things are going to be rocking and rolling here uh, off of our cow power. So I want to thank you guys for all the support and watching this episode, and I uh, hope you stick around next episode where we... Uh, I don't know. We'll conquer something else pretty pretty darn cool. So anyway, guys, this is Scrotitis. We've been playing Feed the Beast, and I'll check you guys all in the next episode. We'll see you.